What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another deck and battle here on PTCGO and today we're going to be taking a look at Dragonite GX. This is of course, you know, one of the big new mascots from the Dragon Majesty mini set that recently came out. So I definitely wanted to try this deck out and see how it does. So I thought this Dragonite card looked pretty interesting. We did talk a good deal about it in our set review. Definitely go check that out as well if you have not already done so. But yeah, like I said, definitely excited to dive into Dragonite here and see how this deck actually fares. So let's see what this evolution line looks like. Of course, Dragon Knight GX is going to be the main attacker of the deck. It's the heart and soul of this archetype. 250 HP stage 2 GX, weak to fairy, 3 retreat cost. Uh, 250 HP especially very, very nice in this format. Uh, you know, a lot of decks right now are going to struggle to knock this thing out in one hit. So you are a pretty tanky Pokemon, and that's kind of what we're counting on in this list you'll see we have max potions and things like that to try to you know just outlast our opponent but 250 hp very very nice on dragonite so the first attack it has is dragon claw for a single lightning energy to 70 damage uh you know it doesn't seem too impressive but uh, with the choice band you hit for 100 then of course we also run the altaria that also came out in dragon majesty so we can kind of push these numbers up a little bit more to ensure that we can take two hit knockouts on basically most everything in the format that's kind of what we're going for here is no matter the deck we want to be able to take two hit knockouts so Dragon Call is actually kind of the main attack we are going to be focusing on. Uh, I know that might seem a little weird when right underneath there is an attack that does 200 damage, but I promise Dragon Call is going to be the best attack we can make use of here. Uh, its next attack, Giga Impact, for a Water Lightning and two Colorist is 200, and this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. So unfortunately, Giga Impact, even though it is very, very powerful, it's just very clunky to get set up. We actually don't run any copies of Water Energy in this list. Uh, so yeah, needing four energies to do this attack, it's just not as efficient as just committing to a two hit knockout strategy with Dragon Claw, because with Dragon Claw we can you know abuse Max Potion since it only requires a single energy. And uh, yeah, it's just a much better attack, I think. But we do run the Super Boost Energy, which I'll talk about in a little bit as well. So if we do need to use Giga Impact, we do at least have the option in certain situations. And then it's GX Attack, Dragon Porter GX for three colorless energy, put three Dragon Pokemon from your discard pile onto your bench. Uh, honestly, this is an attack I expected to use a lot more than I actually have in my testing with this deck. Nevertheless, it is still kind of decent, uh, but most of the time we would just prefer to use Dragon Claw. So Dragon Knight, like I said, we're kind of just aiming this deck around tanking with it and abusing this one energy attack. I uh, do want to point out a couple of things about the pre-evolutions. We are choosing to play the Dragonair from Sun and Moon. It has that Dragon's Wish attack. During your next turn, you may attach any number of energy cards from your hand to your Pokemon. So it's not too relevant most of the time, but the other Dragonair that we got in Dragon Majesty has like a three or four energy attack, I think it is, and you're just not going to be able to make very good use of that. So Dragon's Wish, even though it isn't that great in this deck, it is going to, I think, be the superior Dragonair that we do have right now. And also, uh, just want to point out some stuff about the Dratini that we have. Uh, it's actually interesting. All of the Dratinis that we have access to actually have some really interesting things about them, but they all have some downsides. Like the Sun and Moon one actually has a great attack. It lets you search out the entire evolution line, but it takes grass energy, which we don't run, so we can't make use of that great like setup attack. The other one from Dragon Majesty, I think actually is a consideration. It has 60 HP and it has paralysis on a coin flip, so that is pretty good, but I am opting to go for the 70 HP Dratinis, uh, even though the attack is basically unusable in this deck. Uh, nevertheless, I think the having the extra hit points is going to be more important in the long run, uh, just preventing your opponent from setting up knockouts early on in the game before your Dragon Knights get up and running. I think it's gonna be a little bit more important in this situation, but I do think there is a case to be made for the other one from Dragon Majesty as well, but I think this is going to be the one that I'm going to be favoring. And we also have a 2-2 Altaria line. This is going to be that new Altaria from Dragon Majesty. It has that Fight Song ability. Your Dragon Pokemon's attacks do 20 more to your opponent's active Pokemon. So if we just you know, run over the math with Dragonite real quick. We're doing 70 base damage, but with an Altaria, we're doing 90. And then with a Choice Band, we're doing 120. So that kind of ensures we take one-hit knockouts on, or I'm sorry, two-hit knockouts on everything in the format outside of something like a Metagross GX. That might be something we, we might need to commit an extra extra Altaria into play for. So, uh, But usually you just need one Altaria to make your math work out pretty good. So 
just uh, helps us hit better numbers there. And I uh, just want to point out we are choosing to play the Colette Swablu. I think both Swablus and Dragon Majesty are uh, a consideration, but the other one I think does sleep for just a single energy, which is fine, but I think I'd rather just draw a card. If you're attacking with a Swablu, you're probably in a bad spot anyways, and uh, sleep is basically a 50-50 shot if it's even going to last. Uh, and whereas collect will at least guarantee you some sort of effect to help you maybe draw out of whatever bad situation you're in on your next turn. So that's why I'm favoring collect in this particular list here. And then just around the Pokemon line, guys, nothing else too fancy, just two copies of Tapu Lewy GX. Of course, for that Wonder Tag ability, search out a supporter out of our deck whenever we bench it. We do run a couple copies of Double Colorless Energy as well in this list, so we actually can make use of Energy Drive, uh, but most of the time we're just using it for that Wonder Tag ability, of course. So you guys, pretty straightforward Pokemon line, and that's actually kind of a, a theme of this entire deck. Uh, we are a stage two with a stage one line in here as well, so there's actually not a whole lot of room to really get crazy. Uh, we're just basically trying to play everything, uh, the bare bones of everything, just to get set up. So let's take a look at our trainer cards. We'll start with our supporters, of course. Four copies of Cynthia, the best draw supporter we have right now in the current standard format. Just a nice shuffle and draw six. Uh, we have two copies of Lily. It's going to be our ideal first turn supporter. Draw until we have six. But of course, if we are going first, or if I'm sorry, if it's our first turn, we can draw until we have eight cards in our hand. And even in the mid to late game, sometimes Lily is nice. Like if you have a uh, Dragonite in your hand, but no rare candy, sometimes it's better just to be able to play a Lily as opposed to a Cynthia. Sometimes because you can maybe draw into that last combo piece you need to get your Dragonite up and running. Uh, we also have two copies of Tate and Liza. This is not a supporter. We're seeing too much in Standard, but I kind of like it here. This is, I think, flexible in terms of the supporters you want to run, but I like at least one in this deck just because, of course, we have the option to shuffle our hand into our deck and draw five, but we run no switching cards in this deck outside of Guzma's, so I wanted to have an out to... Uh, you know, some sort of other switching effect. So the secondary effect of Tate and Liza is actually kind of relevant at times because, uh, you know, like I said, we don't have any switching effects in this deck. So if our opponent maybe Guzma stalls something, uh, sometimes it's nice just to be able to, uh, you know, guarantee that switching effect uh, with Tate and Liza. So that's why we are running this in our deck. And then we are also playing two copies of Volkner. This is actually a card I think is amazing in Dragonite. So it's a supporter card. Search your deck for an item card and a lightning energy. Reveal them. Put them into your hand. And uh, this is actually a card I've been considering even going up to higher accounts of just because I find myself wanting it almost every turn. It's so good in this deck. Uh, because let's say you have a Dragonite in hand on your second turn. Uh, you can play Volkner, grab the rare candy, and the lightning energy you need to attack, which is actually amazing with this deck. And I think even better is, probably my favorite combo with it is, after your Dragonite takes a hit, you play Volkner, you grab yourself a max potion and a lightning energy, so you can use max potion to heal off all that damage, and then you have another energy ready to attach back to your Dragonite to keep on attacking with. So Volkner, absolutely great card in this list. Uh, like I said, I would even consider going up to a higher count, but for right now, I think the two copies is kind of getting the job done. We have three copies of Guzma, of course, just to choose what we want to take knockouts on. And then uh, one last supporter, and that is going to be the new Lance Prism Star. So this is a new supporter we got in Dragon Majesty. You can only play this card if one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn. But then you search your deck for up to two Dragon Pokemon and put them onto your bench. And one thing that's very important to note is that Lance does not specify basic Dragon Pokemon. So yes, that means you can even get a Dragonite GX or an Altaria and put it directly onto your bench. So sometimes Lance in the mid to late game, uh, you know, once your opponent takes a big knockout, you can, you know, throw down, throw this thing down, get a bunch of Dragonites back into play and keep on rolling. And this is actually really nice in conjunction with super boost energy as well. Uh, so Lance sometimes can help you fulfill the three GX requirement, or I'm sorry, three stage two requirement that super boost has. Uh, so yeah, just a, a card that seems to have a bit of synergy in here. I'd say maybe half of my games I use it. Uh, well, I'd say maybe slightly less than half. So this might even be a flexible spot, but whenever this card works, it works. And it feels really great when you, when you can pull this thing off. So then going on to the rest of our trainer cards, of course, we have four Mysterious Treasures. It's going to be our ideal search card in here. We discard a card from our hand. If we do search our deck for a Psychic or Dragon Pokemon, reveal, put it into our hand. So that's fantastic because there's nothing in this deck we really want to discard too often. And we can search out everything in this deck outside of Swablu, which is fantastic. 
Uh, we are also playing three copies of Nest Ball as well, just to search out some basics, get them into play a little bit quicker as well. Uh, we have four copies of Rare Candy. Of course, that way we can skip that Dragonair and go straight into our Dragonite GX. Let's see, we also have one Rescue Stretcher for recovery, pretty straightforward there. Uh, for Max Potion, this is a very important card in the deck. Like I said, we are just trying to kind of tank hits with Dragonite GX here, and Max Potion is going to enable that. So we're maxing this thing out uh, just to be able to, you know, ensure that we can kind of win the two-shot war. And you'll notice we don't play any Field Blower in this deck or any Counter Stadiums. Uh, so against things like the Shrine of Punishment decks, this can actually be very nice at denying knockouts. Uh, like if they're going to set up like a baby Tapu Lele play to move around your damage. Max Potion is actually a nice kind of pseudo replacement to Field Blower or Devoured Field to kind of deny those extra damage counters that something like a Shrine of Punishment would put in play. So uh, Max Potion, yeah, definitely a fantastic card here. And then we have four copies of Choice Band as well to round out the list. Definitely it seems like a thick count, but that's because we really actually need Choice Band if we ever want to take two hit knockouts on GXs. Uh, so with a Choice Band, we're going to be hitting for a 100 with a Dragonite. Uh, then with an Altaria, we hit for 120. So that's, uh, you know, hitting two-shotting everything 240 HP or less, and that is going to be pretty important to do. So I uh, definitely want to max out this Choice Band because basically there's not a GX deck that is around that we don't want Choice Band to, to be able to, to use against it. So last trainer card in the list there, I believe. Yep, and going on to the energy, we have kind of an interesting count. We have the one super boost that I mentioned already. It provides colorless energy, but if it's attached to a stage two, it provides uh, one of any type of energy. But if you have three or more stage two Pokemon, it provides uh, every type of energy, but provides four at a time. So yes, that even means we can uh, use this as a quadruple rainbow energy to make use of Dragonite GX's second attack if we need to. Uh, so it's actually come in clutch because sometimes there are times when you do need a one hit knockout and Super Boost can kind of help fulfill that role. Uh, we also have seven copies of lightning energy kind of seems like a low count but you have to remember we are attacking just for a single lightning energy every time uh you could maybe debatably bump this up to eight but i don't think you need any more than that whatsoever in this deck and then we have two copies of double chloros energy to round out the list this is actually a card i would not even really want to play in this deck uh but if you notice dratini actually has a two retreat cost which is pretty annoying and then also dragonite has a three retreat cost so sometimes double chloros energy acts as a uh, like a pseudo switch in that type of situation to help you retreat out of the active also enables us to attack with tapu lele but um yeah this is something i'm torn about actually in the list if you find you're not getting a whole lot of value out of this, you can potentially cut it. But I'll say this, it also does give you the option to attack with Altaria if you are forced to for some reason as well. So like there are situations where this deck does want to run this, but if you're just finding you're not getting a lot of value, I think you can actually cut both of these for one more lightning energy and then one more other kind of flexible spot in the deck. But right now I'm playing with the double colorless energy. It, it does come in handy sometimes, but I do think it is something that could go either way in terms of keeping it or cutting it in the list. But here, as that is going to be the list we're going to be trying out for Dragonite GX. This is a pretty fun deck uh, just because you're constantly taking hits, denying knockouts with max potions and things like that. So, you know, really enjoying this. Not sure how competitive it is just yet. I'm not sure if this is going to be like a tier one deck or anything, but it's definitely a lot of fun. So let's at least head over to the battle portion of the video and we'll show you how this deck looks in action. All right, guys, we found ourselves a game here. Punch is going to call the coin flip. Let's see what we can make happen. And so we are going to win the coin flip. Definitely good with an evolution based like uh, deck like this. That way we can maybe try to get set up just a little bit quicker than our opponent. Get those basics to stick a turn before they start getting knocked out. And here we see some Rayquaza GX, or I'm sorry, not GX, but Rayquaza themed sleeves. Uh, so I'm curious if this is going to be Vicar Ray. If so, that could be a problem. I think Dragonite is going to do decent against a lot of the like two shot type of decks but against decks that can just knocks out in one hit we might honestly be in some trouble i mean i guess our dragon knight does have 250 hp so it's going to be a little bit difficult for them to still make that happen but uh okay this does not appear to be uh rayquaza so this looks like a kingdra gx type of deck so this is interesting we have kind of a uh a showdown between two of the uh, I guess big GX's that came out of Drag Majesty. So here, just gonna get down the energy on Dratini and just sit on this hand. I uh, wanna keep this mysterious treasure just in case, um, you know, if we get 
a supporter off of our top deck, we can use this to grab our other Lele. But uh, yeah, the Volkner was the only thing that we had this turn. So not the strongest of starts, but must have to see what we can make happen. Definitely happy we got to go first because we are kind of having a little bit of a sluggish start. And oh, apparently the same thing from our opponents. So this is, this makes things a little bit interesting. So we can definitely Mysterious Treasure. Just trying to think, what do we get rid of here? Thinking either the Lightning Energy, but might even do Altaria. We can get it back with the Rescue Stretcher if we need to. And I think our energies are going to be kind of precious because uh, we're going to need to retreat this Lele for one. That's going to be one energy uh, down just right there. Not even, you know, being able to use a max potion for it. So what I'm going to do here is get Dragonite. This is kind of a little bit of a risky play, but uh, I kind of like it. So we can retreat Rare Candy into Dragonite. And uh, even though we don't have a supporter in our hand for next turn, we are going to take a prize with Dragon Claw. And then we still have another card for our top deck. And uh, our opponents have been kind of a slow start too, so I think we can kind of capitalize here. And even if we similarly don't have much going on, I think we can kind of just slide by until we can get ourselves a supporter. But here our opponent does have the Rare Candy Kingdra of their own. Okay, so they look like they were kind of sitting on their hand there, kind of disguising how strong it actually was. Or maybe they top deck the uh, Cynthia for turn, who knows. But So they are going to have this Kingdra in play, and actually this is a little bit scary for us too because... Even though Kingdra I don't think is going to be able to hit quite as hard as something like a Rayquaza GX, it still definitely has one-shot potential. Uh, so for every water energy it has, it's going to be able to do some more damage to us. And here, that's actually a great top deck. We get the Tate and Liza. So uh, what I'll do here is we can get down this Lightning Energy, and here we're going to Tate and Liza. Uh, I do kind of want to use Mysterious Treasure there, but I really didn't want to get rid of our Rescue Stretcher. So here, luckily we do get a Nest Ball, so we can grab ourselves another Dratini, or we could get... Hmm. Or we could even go for the Swablu. Because, well, I think either way we're going to have to three-shot our opponent here. Even if we get the Altaria out next turn, it won't change things. So I think I'd rather just get down the Dratini. So we're going to do 70. Next turn we can do another 70. It's going to be at 140. So from there, at that point, we just need to make sure that we can find a choice band. So... I definitely like the Dratini a little bit better here. I wish we would have gotten a Swabu down on turn one. Uh, that would have been kind of nice. But, um, you know, we're doing what we, uh, you know, we're playing to our outs at this point. So your opponent is going to go for an Oranguru. And we'll have to see what they're going to do. Are they going to keep committing energy to this Kingdra that's, like, inevitably going to go down? Okay, so. What do we do here? We do have a Volkner in deck, so we could do that. I kind of like that. So what we can do here, we can go for... Supporter will grab our last Volkner of the deck. We can grab ourselves another Max Potion and just trying to kind of win the two shot war here. So, our opponent can try to keep piling energy onto this Kingdra, but uh, it's inevitably going to go down on their next turn. So, here we're going to go with a Max Potion and go for another Dragon Call. So, uh, like I said, we just need a Choice Band on one of my next two turns, counting this turn we just had. So, uh, we really just need to find Choice Band on our next turn to make sure that we can take a knockout. We need to do 20 more damage. So, we'll see what our opponent's gonna do. If I had to assume, probably just swing on this Dragonite for a healthy amount of damage. I think they could even potentially go for their GX attack here. It's like for a water. It does 40 to all of your opponent's Pokemon. So that actually could maybe set up some math for some future knockouts potentially. We'll have to see what direction they're going to go in though. So here we're just going to see another Hydro Pump. That's actually okay with me. I would actually prefer that. Ooh, and that's actually a great top deck. Um, so we do. We've done two max potions we could lily i, I kind of wanted the idea or i like the idea of going for the lily maybe getting a max potion having energy in hand but cynthia i felt like it would give us more opportunity to see more cards and unfortunately we whiffed the lightning energy to i, I guess abuse the max potion we had in hand but um our opponent does not have a kingdra set up just yet so uh you know, depending on what they hit here, we might even be safe. And here our opponent's going to promote the Oranguru. So that kind of tells me they don't have much going on. And they are going to use Copycat. Ugh, that's definitely not what I like to see. So Copycat, that new supporter that came out in, well, I guess not so new at this point, but came out Celestial Storm. Shuffle and draw equal to amount of cards your opponent has in hand. So they definitely got a good amount of cards. They're going to get down a Seizure and a Volcanium Prism Star as well. 
Okay, so they are definitely having a half decent turn here. Uh, luckily though, they did not have a way to respond after that knockout. And so what we can do is we can actually abuse this uh, max potion. And here we're just gonna take a peek, see, oh, we have just two lightning energy and then a super boost left in deck. So our means of attacking are actually getting a little bit scary here. Of course we can attack with Lele at some point since we still have some DCEs left in deck if we need to. Here I'm gonna get down that choice ban on the Bench Rotini and just use Cynthia just to kind of thin an extra card out of our deck. And okay, this is not a great hand. <laughs> um, I mean, next turn we can get the Altari down, we can play Lily, but we were not able to actually swing on this Oranguru. So that is a little bit unfortunate too because we are at an odd amount of prizes. And right now we're in a situation where we need to knock out one more GX and a non-GX to win the game. So actually, I would have liked to kind of soften up this Oranguru here. So here our opponent is getting some energy in play, starting to use some Aqua Patches, and then they have that Instruct ability they can use as well. So this is getting a little bit scary because if our opponent can capitalize on this like slow, uh, you know, mid game I'm kind of having here. Oh God, a third Aqua Patch. Yeah, so pressure is definitely starting to mount a little bit, I feel like. If they can kind of capitalize on this and build up a giant King Drift to just one shot any Dragonite I have, then they could potentially sweep us. So we're gonna have to see if they can make that happen. What, what do we do here? We definitely get down the Altaria. That's without question. I think we go for the Tate and Liza though. We could have played the Lily, but we just need to see more cards. We really need to grab an energy here. Oh my God. So, all right. So we are going to whiff, but yeah, I definitely want to get down this double Karos energy on Tapu Lele. It, it's, it can be a back of attacker force at some point. So um, yeah, I guess that's going to be our turn. So. Our opponent is going to instruct here. And we're going to see an Ultra Ball. Okay. And this is actually a situation where I wish we would have gotten an attack last turn because now we could actually knock out this Orangu and they would have a zero card hand. So a little bit bummed about that our last turn. But nevertheless, we finally found a Lightning Energy here. We're going to do 90 to this Orangu. And let's see. What are they going to do this turn? Luckily, they are still not one-shotting us with this Kingdra. Uh, but they are going to find themselves another energy here. And do they have anything else that they can really do? Okay, just a pass. Uh, okay, we have a Nest Ball. I definitely want to burn that. Uh, we'll get down another Dratini. Maybe try to set up a Super Boost play, uh, potentially by getting out three Dragonites if possible. And yeah, I think we just go for the Dragon Call. kind of want to save this Double Colorless energy. Uh, just in case our opponent did try to knock out this Lele next turn. I don't want two DCEs on it. Uh, I'd rather be able to kind of spread them around at some point if we need to. Oh god, this this Kingdra is so thick right now. It's doing 290. This is wild. And this is kind of what I was talking about. If they're able to power up this giant Kingdra, we could be in a bit of a situation. But luckily, they've committed so much energy to this Kingdra. And we can actually, I think, kind of uh, capitalize on this weekend. You know, throw down the extra DCE. I don't think we can actually take a knockout. We would need something like a Kakui or something like that, I believe. But here I'm going to grab myself another Dragonite GX. And so we can actually play this hand down pretty well. We're going to get down the Choice Pan on Lele. And we're going to go for the Lily here. And okay, so we have Mysterious Treasure. I think, I think we can save that. Or we could even go for another Dratini potentially. Try to set up a third, uh, like, Dragonite. Mm. We'll just save it, just in case we want to evolve this other dragon there next turn. Uh, but here we're going to do 210 to this Kingdra. So, I mean, they can Guzma up something, take a knockout. Like, if they really want to knock out our Dragonite, that's fine, because they are just going to get returned KO. They really need, like, a max potion or something. Otherwise, we just win next turn, because uh, we can just attach this Lightning Energy and kind of go crazy and, uh, you know, knock out this Kingdra with our Dragonite. But here they are going to treat, but unfortunately, unless our opponent has a Judge or a Mars Shadow or something like that, we are gonna be able to take the game. So yeah, our opponent's just going to retreat into this old Burning Shadows Kingdra, his for 90. And uh, so next turn we can attach this Lightning. And okay, they're gonna do some damage to Altari, not a big deal. But um, yeah, we can get down this dr other Dragonite, doesn't really matter too much. But here we will just go for the Guzma, bring up that Kingdra back and attach to Dragonite and take the last knockout against this Kingdra GX deck. So. Dragonite uh, kind of emerging victorious out of these, uh, you know, two 
I don't want to say big new archetypes from Dragon Majesty, but um, I got some of the bigger new cards to come out of this set. But let's try, try ourselves out in another game and see what we can make happen here. And okay, just a mulligan. And okay, one from our opponent as well. So that's good. That means they won't get an extra card off of my mulligan. And okay, I actually like this hand. It's pretty decent. We have the first turn Lily. We have Nest Ball, so we can even get down a Swablu, set up that Altaria for next turn. And let's see what our opponent is playing, because they did take a mulligan. Kind of curious. Uh, not really any hints. Oh, okay. And that's interesting. They didn't show us the mulligan hand our opponent had. Or maybe I'm blind and didn't notice it, but I don't think they did. But, um... Yeah, anyway, so we are going to get down a second Dratini here. And here I'm just going to go for a, a Lily. Uh, now I'm wishing I would have gotten down the... <laughs> I wish I would have got down the Swablu instead. Uh, but luckily... Well, I guess actually I'm not even sure if it really matters too much in this matchup. Because no matter what, we're going to have to two-shot any uh, like Garboders. Or I'm assuming this is going to be playing something like Buzzwool. Uh, I think that's going to be most likely. It's going to be Buzzwool Garboder. So I guess the Swablu, you know, not too, not not too pressing in that situation. So here I'm just going to get down that Lightning Engine, like I said, and uh, just pass on over to our opponent. So let's see what they're going to do. We're going to see a Tabu Coco. So maybe this is going to be like a spread Shrine of Punishment style deck. If that's the case, uh, you know, I definitely want to be careful about the stuff that we bench here. And our opponent is going to Ultra Ball. Let's see, are they going to get a Ranguru? Are they going to get Lele? Oh, Pissimian, okay. That's actually very interesting. So, Pissimian, I'm actually not sure if they can actually knock us out. Maybe with Shrine of Punishments, they could set up some knockouts, but even if they have uh, all four Pissimian in play uh, and their damage modifiers, I don't think they're ever gonna be able to one-shot a Dragonite. Uh, they are going to need, uh, you know, like a lot of like residual Shrine damage to have already been in play. If you ever see Brooklet Hill come down, okay, I like that. That's not a Shrine of Punishment, so uh, that's, that makes me feel a little bit better. And so they are going to get down, looks like Diancy. They're going to get down the other Pissimian that is going to increase their damage to Evolution Pokemon by 30, I believe it is. So they do have uh, plenty of damage modifiers, but luckily for us right now as well, uh, they've kind of staggered their bench in a way where they can't get down all of their Pissimians just yet. And that's actually a great top deck that we get. So here we can go for the Rare Candy Lightning Energy. So we will go for the Mysterious Treasure. We can get rid of the Altaria. Like I said, don't know how good it's going to be. If we do get out two Altarias at some point, it can be relevant just because Pissimian does have 110 HP. But uh, we do have that Rescue Stretcher to get that second Altaria back at some point if we need it. So here, what do we do? Um... Just thinking we can attach the Lightning Energy, or we could save it just in case of a Max Potion. Uh, but here we're just going to get down just in case. Not really worried about Dratini being knocked out. Uh, I mean, they can have at it if they really want to. Uh, that just means our Dragonites are not going to be taking hits. So We are going to knock out Trubbish, which is fine by me. We do play a decent amount of items in this deck, so uh, being able to take away maybe something that can take a big knockout in the late game is going to be really nice but i imagine they play plenty of rescue stretchers if this is a Pissimian deck so if i had to guess this won't be the last we see of trubbish if your opponent is going to be playing a gladion okay so let's see what they're going to grab here so they get a card out of the prizes and they get get to put that gladion back in there to replace it and i'm guessing Okay, so they are going to get down another Pissimian, so they are kind of threatening to start starting to do some big damage with their Pissimians, and uh, you know, they're going to get down some uh, damage with that Tapu Koko with the Choice Band. They are going to be doing 50, and right now I'm just trying to think they do, was it 10 plus 30 for every Pissimian they have in play, I believe it is, or 10 plus 40? It might be 10 plus 40, so uh, they'd be doing, was that, or on their bench, I should say, so that's... What, 130 base damage, 150 with the Dianti Prism Star. So, I mean, I think we're probably safe, honestly. So, we're just going to go ahead and Dragon Claw here, I think. Um, and we have that Max Potion ready to go for next turn if we do get swung on. So, so 
So let's see what our opponent is going to do this turn. I would imagine, like I said, we're probably just going to see another flying flip. I think flying flip is really good at setting up some of these knockouts. Yeah, seems good. Our opponent did not play a draw supporter though, so maybe their hand is a little bit dead. So yeah, we definitely want to play this max potion. Well, we should probably check on the math um, of our opponent. Was it? So yeah. They're going to do 30 more with those Pissimians, so they're going to be doing 150. Uh, when it, ooh, yeah, yeah, they'd be doing a good bit once you factor in the damage modifiers of uh, Pissimians and the Diancian and all that. So yeah, we definitely need to heal there. And here we will Mysterious Treasure getting rid of this Choice Band. Unfortunately, we are dumping some items, but uh, you know what? That is okay with me. Definitely want to get down this Dragonair just to evolve and uh, you know try to prevent these Dratinis from being knocked out before they evolve. So... We'll do that, and we'll get down this super boost. It is unfortunate we have to play that. Would prefer to save that uh, to maybe go for like a big knockout to do 200 at some point. But unfortunately, that was the only energy we had access to. And this is a situation where maybe cutting double colorless energy could even be beneficial because uh, had this double colorless energy been a lightning, that would have been definitely better than having to attach the super boost. So maybe I'll have to experiment with a list that plays uh, strictly lightning energy. But um, it kind of worked out in this situation, uh, nevertheless. So your opponent is going to go for an energy, a Lodo, going to grab a counter energy, okay? Uh, ooh, okay, we are going to see a Mimikyu. That could be that could be interesting at some point. They can, uh, you know, copy our attacks. I don't know how impactful that's going to be unless we actually use Giga Impact. And I honestly just don't think we're ever really going to. So here I'm going to get down... Um, yeah, I think I'll attach, I'm just trying to think where I want this energy. Yeah, it, as weird as it is, I'm going to put it on the Swaggo because I can retreat this Dragonite with the Super Boost. Oh, and that's actually a pretty good hand, too. We have the Max Potion as well. Or we could even go for Giga Impact. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of like that. We are going to give up some prizes, but you know what? It's okay. Uh, this... You know, this lone Dragonite took, uh, what was it, three prizes for us. So I think we're still in a favorable spot as far as the prize exchange is going to go. And we can just take a return KO on this Mimikyu um, on the next turn. So, uh, you know, we could have hard retreated this Dragonite and used Max Potion, but I kind of liked taking a knockout there. Opponent really hasn't done too much as far as like draw spores and things like that. So uh, I don't mind kind of putting on a little bit of extra pressure here, uh, you know, while we can still make use of the Super Boost energy as well. Okay, so we're going to see Passimian come down. And just a Giga Impact of their own. But like I said, it's, it's fine with me. We are still ahead in the prize exchange uh, in this game. So we can... Uh, we'll just promote Dragonite. I don't think it matters too much which one we promote here. I'm um, just trying to think. Like, I'm just trying to think, are we going to go for a Guzma? at all if so that might affect who we promote because i kind of want these dragonites with choice band to stay alive a little longer just because whenever they get knocked out that will be an extra item going into the discard so i guess we'll just do this that's fine by me i suppose and oh we have actually lance prism star we can make use of here that's actually kind of spicy so I'm a little annoyed because we do have our fourth Dragonite in hand, but it's still kind of okay because we can get out. Hmm. Just trying to think if there's anything else we would want, but I think Lance is just going to be better here. Yeah, so we can get out an Altaria uh, right onto the bench, and then we can actually just evolve this Swablu whenever we find that Rescue Stretcher at some point as well. So we can... Yeah, I guess we can just Dragon Claw here. And I don't think our opponent's going to be able to take a knockout on us. Or maybe they can. Let me see. Um, I think they're going to be just a little bit short if I did my math correct. So it's going to be 60, 80 damage extra with the, with the uh, Diancy that they have. And here we are going to see a field blower. Okay. Interesting. So putting some items in the discard, trying to set up like a uh, trash winch play for later on in the game, maybe. 
And here we're going to see a team play. So they are going to do 180 damage, but uh, unfortunately for them, that is not going to be enough to actually take a knockout on our Dragonite here. So we definitely are going to max potion, like, without question. So we can... Yeah, we'll definitely max potion. Actually, what we can do this turn, we can Guzma up this Trubbish. I kind of like this. So bring up that Trubbish. Garbage is definitely going to be a pain for us in the late game. We've played a lot of items. We have Rare Candy, so we can actually get out our third Dragonite again. Yeah, and actually this kind of sets up um, yeah, a way for us to close out this game. If we just hit our Rescue Stretcher um, on, on our next turn, we have the Vulcaner. We can actually just grab Altari get, and get our second Altari into play, allowing us to do 110 to knock out a Passimian. So this should work out really nicely, as long as we don't get hit with like a Mars Shadow or a Judge or something like that. So, big moment of truth, what does our opponent have? Because we know our Rescue Stretcher is in deck, but here we're just going to see a team play for another 180. So that means that we can just grab our Volkner here and grab Rescue Stretcher and a Lightning Energy to close out the game here. And uh, actually, we can probably add a little insult to in injury. We're going to Max Potion off this Dragonite uh, just to <laughs> demoralize our opponent a little bit. Uh, I feel kind of bad for him because they got so close, like both these last turns, they were like, what? 20 HP away from taking knockout or something like that and we just max potioned off every time and say so, yeah we're gonna get out that second Altaria hit for 110 knocking out Passimian to win the game here with Dragonite GX so yeah pretty convincing win I mean even though our opponent dip, didn't really play a whole lot of supporters they still had an energy to attach every single turn um, but yeah, uh, I'm glad I got to show off the strategy of this deck. I'm glad we got to get some games in with Lance Prism Star. It's a card that doesn't come up a lot, but it's fun when you can actually find a game where you can make use of it. But yeah, guys, that's going to be Dragonite GX. I hope you enjoyed this video. As usual, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you can support this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it would mean a lot. But with that, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.